Welcome to another episode of Eric Wade Whiskey Studies. And in this series, I'm sharing my trip to the UK in which I spent two days in London, England, and two weeks traveling around Scotland visiting distilleries, meeting up with fellow whiskey tubers, and I spent two days at the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy and got a diploma in uh, single malt scotch whiskey. Uh, so up in Speyside, up in uh, the Highlands, I had recommend in a previous video staying at the Kugalaki Hotel and checking out the Copper Dog restaurant and bar uh, because of its central location near a lot of distilleries and sort of on the main road. But that's not where I stayed. I stayed at the Castle Hotel in Huntley near the Huntley Castle ruins. So you have your different options of places you can stay while traveling around Scotland. Some of the most affordable and might have more modern conveniences are modern hotels or and motels, and those have those advantages. Particularly if you're a you know whiskey tuber and you want to do a live stream from from Scotland. However, I also like to stay at castles whenever possible. There are a lot of them in Scotland. They're much more rustic, they're much more historic, and sort of put you in the mood for being in Scotland. However, the disadvantages are a lot of times the uh, the uh, modern conveniences may not be there. So I stayed at the Huntley Castle Hotel, uh, but because the walls are so thick uh, of, the, of, the, of the Castle Hotel, uh, internet um, availability wasn't that great. I had to check my emails from actually from the, the lobby, even though the website says that they have Wi-Fi. It's also a little bit further out in the country, away from most of the distilleries, with the exception of Glendronic, uh, which is actually really close by, and I'm going to be sharing uh, my video uh, tour of Glendronic Distillery. So here's a short little clip, give an introduction to Huntley Castle and the Castle Hotel, and then I'll share with you my walk around of the ruins of Huntley Castle. Huntley Castle is a ruined castle in Huntley in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. It was built in the 12th century and was the ancestral home of the chief of the clan, Gordon, Earl of Huntley. The Castle Hotel, originally known as Sandstone, was built as a family home for the Dukes of Gordon during the 18th century. Later, it was refurbished and extended with stones from the ruins of the Huntley Castle in 1769 and renamed Huntley Lodge. The fifth and final Duke of Gordon enlisted Archibald Simpson, the celebrated Aberdeen architect, to help with its design. The last Duchess of Gordon, Elizabeth Brody, also known as the Good Duchess, lived in the house until she died in 1865. Huntley Lodge was sold from the main estate in 1924 and was used as a hospital during World War II. It became the Castle Hotel shortly afterwards and the Michael John family have owned it for the last 15 years. Hey, this is Eric Waite and I'm staying in Huntley while in uh, Speyside, staying at the Castle Hotel, and nearby is the Huntley Castle. One of the things you got to do when you're uh, visiting Scotland, visiting distilleries, is take time out to uh, see other things other than distilleries and drinking whiskey. And two of my favorite things are seeing picked stones or standing stones and uh, the occasional castle. Um, so anyhow, check it out.
enjoyed my little tour around the Huntley Castle. Uh, now I'm off to Blendronic Distillery. Alrighty, so if you stay at the Castle Hotel or many other uh, Castle Hotels, expect things to be a lot more rustic, right? These places are hundreds and hundreds of years old. Expect maybe some of the modern convenience of modern hotels might not be there, but they more than make up for it uh, in its charm and in the hospitality the owners of the uh, castle hotel are the hosts. They're not just, you know, someone who owns it and lives distantly. They live there and they are super, super hospitable. They have an excellent whiskey bar and the food uh, at the restaurant there is absolutely superb. So I highly, highly recommend staying at the castle hotel. And you can actually walk from the castle hotel down to... Uh, Huntley Castle, uh, or as I did, I drove around uh, from the Castle Hotel to the castle, and then from there I went to the Glendronic Distillery. Some castles in Scotland have been uh, refurbished and upkept, and they look quite um, pristine. Some are more of ruins, and th that too has its own charm. And seeing something so old and see it in its sort of um, withered estate. Some castles have been turned into hotels, as I stated one uh, on the Kintar Peninsula. So there are so many of them, they're all worth checking out. Whether seeing them as, you know, sort of converted hotels, whether seeing them as, as ruins, or just sort of seeing them in a more pristine estate. Alrighty, after doing a tour of the ruins of Huntley Castle, I then drove over to Glendronic Distillery, and here are my notes and a quick tour of Glendronic Distillery. Glendronic Distillery is located near Forg by Huntley, Aberdeenshire in the Highland Whiskey District. It was founded in 1826 by James Alderez as the second distillery to apply for the license to legally produce whiskey under the Excise Act of 1823, which passed three years earlier and which allowed for distilling of whiskey in Scotland. In 1881, it was purchased by Walter Scott in 1920, it was acquired by Charles Grant, son of the founder of Glenfiddich Distillery. In 1960, the Glendronic Distillery was purchased by Teachers and Sons Limited, who increased the number of stills from two to six. In 1996, the distillery was closed during a recession. In 2001, it was reopened by Allied Distillers Limited. And in 2006, the distillery was purchased by Shivas Brothers Limited, a part of Pernod Ricard Group. And in 2008, it was sold to Ben Rick Distillery Company. In 2016, the Glendronic Distillery was purchased by the Brown Foreman Corporation, along with Ben Rick and Glenglasso Distilleries. The distillery draws its water from the Dronic Burn within the distillery grounds. It has its own four maltings and two wash stills, in addition to two spirit stills.
So Glantronic still maintains um, the, the old kilns. Uh, it looks like so they would do uh, peating of the barley and so forth. They don't still do that. They don't do that anymore. Uh, but they still maintain for historical purposes. You do a tour, you can see how it used to be, what you saw there uh, in the video. They do, however, use local barley uh, from the immediate area. All right, after doing a tour, we tasted a few uh, whiskeys. The first was the eight-year-old, the Halen. This is bottled at 46% alcohol by volume, aged in bourbon and sherry cast, and sells for about $36 here in the United States. The second was the 12-year-old, uh, bottled at 43% alcohol by volume, and it sells for about $38 here in the United States. And after tasting those, what I really, really wanted was a taste of the hand-filled cask. It wasn't part of the normal tasting, um, but they had a bottle behind the counter and they were able to give me a sample. And then I absolutely had to get a bottle, which I filled myself. This is the Glendronic hand-filled. It's a unique bottle of Glendronic that has been hand-filled straight from the cask. You do not see this listed anywhere on the website. You won't see this listed anywhere. It's sort of a secret that you don't know about until you visit the distillery. This was distilled on uh, November 2nd, 1994. I bottled it on July 16th, 2019. This is bottle 172 of cask 5086. It's bottled at 54.7% alcohol by volume, and it was aged in a sherry puncheon. This is an absolutely superb whiskey. Now, what I, what I like to do is open a bottle and pour a sample in there, and then take you know, this challenge coin, little glass lid, and put it on there, and let it sit there four, five, six hours. Let it open up in the glass. Now, I'll first smell and taste it immediately from the neck pour. Then after five or six hours, smell and taste it again to do a comparison, see how much it has developed between the time I did a neck pour and the time that I have it has spent in the glass. I've said many, many times in previous videos, do not judge a bottle by a neck pour. However, this one's probably the exception because straight from the neck pour, I can't imagine um, this style of whiskey being any better. It is absolutely, absolutely superb. On the nose, it's like pecan pie, figs and dates that have been maybe turned into a compote because it's very, 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 very concentrated. Crystallized honey, maple syrup, caramels. You definitely do get a little bit of a sort of a charred oak character to it. Dark chocolate. There's sort of the nougat from a candy bar. There's a slight little saltiness to it. I get baklava. If you don't know what baklava is, look it up. There is a orange with cloves in it, cinnamon, Christmas cake or a panettone roll, so dried fruits in a panettone roll. Absolutely, I mean, just on the note, you could. this is a whiskey, you could just sit there and just smell it for days and enjoy it that way, but let's give it a little taste. Unbelievable. Even though it's at like 54.7% alcohol by volume, there's no bite, there's no burn. When it hits your palate, it's almost as if it sort of evaporates on your palate and goes up through your nose and your passageways and just sort of fills your whole head. It just glides across the palate. Texturally, it is absolutely just really, 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 really silky. It is very, very sweet. It, ha it is a mouth coating and yet not cloying. It has an amazing development from the front to the middle and to the finish. Up front, a big punch of dried black fruits, dates, figs, raisins. Then comes the crystallized honey, chocolate, dark caramels. 
there is that brown sugar maple syrup baklava kind of a character to it. And then what finishes is vanillas, vanilla creams. Absolutely fantastic. This has the longest finish of any whiskey I've ever had. On my first pour, I actually took a sip and then just waited to see how long I could still taste it. It was probably about an hour. And I'm, it sounds like hyperbole, but it was probably about an hour that I could talk and breathe. I can breathe in and out like this and still taste it in my mouth. This is absolutely phenomenal. Without a doubt, this is the greatest sherry cask single malt scotch I've ever had. How much did I pay for it? I didn't keep the receipt, unfortunately, I, or, I, or I lost it. I don't remember. I'm going by memory. I'm going, so it was really, really steep, and I thought, wow, that's, that's a lot of money for one bottle. But when I tasted it, I had to have it. If I recall correctly, and I could be wrong, it was like, I think it was like two, 265 pounds, which converted to US dollars to take you over $300. That's, but that's, but don't quote me on that. It was in that neighborhood. That, I'm going by, by my memory. Now, I wish I'd bought 10 bottles of this. So, a while back, I, during from an auction, I had um, um, got three samples of uh, the McAllen number six. That goes for, I don't know, $4,000 or something like that. And I still have a sample of that. I'll probably do a side by side comparison later. This absolutely blows it away. Rather than spending thousands of dollars on a McAllen number six, I would rather get on an airplane, fly to Scotland. You could fly into um, uh, Edinburgh or Glasgow and then take a short hop and fly again up into the Highlands and then go to the distillery and, and, and buy a few of these. You would save money in doing so. This is absolutely spectacular. Now, when I judge a whiskey or wines, and I give it a score, I have to justify the score in my own head, which is, why didn't I go higher? So if I have something that's, say, an 88 or an 89, what keeps it from becoming a 90? Usually it has something to do with the development or the, the, the uh, uh, evolution of the whiskey in your mouth or the length of the finish, the uh, a certain amount of complexity and so forth. Going up into the 90s, what would I want? Let's say I give something a 95. Why don't I go even higher than 95? What ke keeps it from being perfection? That's what I have to say in my head when I come to a particular score. Uh, some people might just pull numbers out of their pocket, or whatever, and say this is what the score is. But in my head, I, I give a rationale for it. And most of the time, I try to explain why I gave it the score that I do. I'm trying to think in my head, what more could I want from this whiskey? Could it have a better evolution? In the, in the, no. Could it have more complexity and, and layers of flavor? I can't imagine it. Could it have a longer finish? I seriously doubt it. This is perfection in a glass. It's one drawback is obviously the price, but given the other whiskeys that are out there that people spend so much for, I can't even complain about the price. Availability, yeah. This is near impossible to get. The only way you're going to get it is go to the distillery and, you know, uh, bottle it yourself. That That is it. And you can't even do that until after you do a tour, right? Uh, and it's not like they're going to let you pull up with a truck and just fill up your truck full of these bottles, right? I'm going to give this a perfect score. I'm going to give this 100 points. 100 points. And I can't recall if I ever... I've done it with two wines over the last 20 years. I can't recall ever giving a whiskey a perfect score. This is 100 points. Now, the problem with that is it sort of ruins my top 10 for 2019 uh, because if it's 100 points, unless I come up with another whiskey after this that is uh, on par qual in quality, in quality uh, this is going to end up being my whiskey of the year for 2019. But... You know, the year's not over yet. We've still got more whiskeys to try uh, and more to taste. So there is a potential that I could come across another one and that would be on par with this one. And then we'd have to have a shootout. 
but we'll see how it goes. Alrighty, uh, that's it for this review. If you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, but you like watching my videos, I would greatly appreciate it if you would give this video a thumbs up, share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.